hello welcome back to the ministry this is Taj McCameron and I know y'all we've been talking about the counterfeit but God brought the counterfeit back and he's kind of pressing on me for y'all not the men no more we pressing for the ladies because a lot of us like to hit on the counterfeit for the men like we don't get any problems either Uh uh-uh stop playing the enemy comes after us too And I thought that I did the exhaustiveness when I talked about temptation, okay? But the Lord brought this back to my attention. He wanted me to hit on these three or so points because he brought this back to me. And evidently, somebody needs this. And he gave me a little bit of a wisdom revelation in relation to this. I kind of touched on it when I was talking about that film because I think I went pretty exhaustively in Temptations. But I want the Lord's kind of bringing me back here. Okay. You must be extremely careful in this season. We have the understanding. Our God of Day spouses are literally right around the corner. Uh, Stephanie P. did a video where she talked about the fact that um, your God-ordained spouse is shy. Now, some of you, you do have shy spouses. Some of you, your spouse isn't so much that he's shy. He's dealing with mental warfare that's trying to hold him down. But guess what? I pray in order to come against that warfare. I declare and decree with all dominion and authority every tie that binds my God-ordained spouse down be broken for he who the sun says free is free indeed and i break down the middle of wall of partition in the name of jesus and guess what i've been seeing 214 everywhere i've been seeing it heavy in the past couple of days so it's coming down okay so you need to be aware of that but stephanie was talking about she was she saw a wedding ceremony and the guy wanted to approach the girl but he kind of was in this mode of He was too shy to approach. And the Lord brought my attention to this. And I kind of, I ain't been talking about it, but I guess I'm going to bring it up here. Um, It's the film, Goofy Movie, from childhood. Some of y'all was kids when this movie came out. I know I was. And he had me look at it um, several months back. And in it, the guy who was played by Goofy's teenage son, was literally every time the girl that was of his dreams literally came up to him, he didn't know what to say. His mouth dropped open and he was like, and it's funny. It's that movie is so in alignment. I mean, there are things that are very specific to me in that film. And even down to the way that the girl's father acts. It's like, yeah, my dad would be that guy <laughs> that would be trying to block. It's like, no. And the guy is like, his mouth is just dropped open every time she shows up. He don't know how to talk to her. He drops everything. But he's he knows how to be his coolness when he did that stage performance that he set up. And some of your guys know how to be that guy, meaning the one that's out there, the one that's cool, the one that everybody knows them to be that guy. They know how to be that guy. But when it comes down to actually having a conversation with a female of their own fruition, they're like, <laughs> and that's what Stephanie P was talking about. And, um, But what she was saying in that video was go get your woman, meaning these guys really are at a point. They need to come get us because of the fact that the enemy sees, the enemy sees that um, there's this impending approach of the God-ordained spouse. And because there's impending approach of the God ordained spouse, in her vision, she saw the guy that's supposed to go to the God ordained wife, and he's sitting there over there, <laughs> while there's another guy that came out of absolute thin air <laughs> and ran up to the God ordained wife and put his arm around her. 
Why am I mentioning this? The Lord has been putting in front of my eyes for the past 24 to 48 hours. Last night, I was skimming through channels on the television. I wouldn't have never had the TV on, but my dad was sitting here and um, he just likes to sleep with the TV. So I happened to flip through channels. And when I was flipping through channels, I saw the movie The Perfect Guy. Anybody that has seen the movie The Perfect Guy understands, much like the film um, Temptations, the guy was highly attracted to the main character, which was the female. But I noticed, which I didn't pay attention to, I probably saw it when I first watched the movie, but I didn't feel like watching the movie last night. I don't like to feed into those things, but I'm. It's, this is for somebody. So I feel like it's necessary since we're here, we're going to just empty out everything. But um, he was a computer technician that worked for, he was like a, a IT guy. So that means he was constantly on the computer. And as we know, when somebody is seeking somebody, they will go online and they'll get all the information about the person. That, and especially in these creepy films, they manage to find information, identity stuff, and all kinds of craziness in whatever way because they're seeking to find out everything that they can about this person in order to approach them, but they're coming from the wrong heart posture. They're seeking because they want to destroy. I was listening to Bowl for Christ yesterday and I was, I was listening to a couple of her words and something made me refresh the page. And when I hit page refresh, um, it showed me that she was live at the very time I was watching one of her other videos. And something made me go into that broadcast of course it was God and she, it, she was talking about be very careful in this season because of the fact that the enemy is not playing in this season he's not just sending you a scrub that you are automatically going to deny he's sending you somebody that looks exactly like what you would want in this season Somebody that you would be highly interested in, highly interested in entertaining and literally blocking up the path for your God ordained spouse to step in that spot. Um, because they look good and you may want to keep them around for a couple of days. How many times I did a video Mm, about a month ago by the time you see this or a little bit longer than a month ago where I talked about you've got to pay attention to God first it might have been two months you've got to pay attention to God first because he's the one that's going to help you avoid these booby traps because that's what they are they're booby traps and these traps Remember I talked about the bomb and the warning of the bomb? This is your warning for a bomb because these people are operating in spirits of perversion, lust, all of these. Remember all of the notches on the bomb I was talking about? This is what they are operating in. And if you entertain them, I need you to understand that they're not in a secure headspace. Now, some they may be secure. They may just be a counterfeit to who you're supposed to be in relationship with. I told y'all in the word of temptations that when the enemy sent me counterfeits in previous seasons, when I tell you they were exact doppelgangers to my God ordained spouse, it would make you look at the person three times. Because I was like, wait, no, it looks like, wait, no, it looks like him. It really does look like him down to the facial, the, the bone structure, everything identical, identical. These counterfeits getting good. <laughs> so when I tell you, you got to be careful. And what she was talking about is 
the counterfeit will either be an exact duplicate of your god or dang spouse. He's just not your spouse. You're not supposed to be with that person. It's a good, good idea, but it's not God. Then you're going to get the person that's God, which is the one that you're supposed to be with. Then you have the other one, which is the third party, which is the one that looks good, but is strictly from the devil. Which brings me back to the movie, The Perfect Guy. This guy tracked her, looked all over for information on her, looked on what he could do in order to, the enemy studies you. If you do not know, we're in a season where monitoring spirits are all over the place. This is probably why the Lord has me doing these videos. Cause guess what? I'm not saying nobody talk about this stuff. I'm seeing people talk about counterfeits, but they're not talking about the things that you need to be aware of. Cause everybody's always stuck on the man's counterfeits. Hey, you know, you got one too. Hello. Hey, hi. If you didn't know, there's one looking for you too. So, um, this guy, he became everything in which she wanted and somebody, Oh, who was that? I'm thinking of somebody's video from, oh God, this had to have been eight, nine months ago. I think my best guess is Keys to the Kingdom did this. Don't know the name of the video, but she talked about being in a dream. I think it was her. It was either Keys to the Kingdom or Loving Miracles with Ray. And they talked about being in this dream where... They were in a store. It was a conven it was a mm, clothing store. And the guy was lurking in the back and he was watching the chick, trying to observe what she was doing. Not only did she do that, the uh servant of God recently did a word talking about there are people lurking. Stephanie P continues to mention there are still people out here lurking. Because she was talking about how she had a dream of somebody tracking her in her dream in a vehicle. Okay? And the second that she looked at them, they sped off. You have to be careful because spiritually there are things that are trying to monitor. I always pray the scripture. I believe it's Psalms. Is it Psalms 27? I'm not sure what which scripture it is. But it is it Psalms 27 5 um because that's what's sticking in my mind that uh cover me in the shield of the pavilion of the blood of Jesus uh that the enemy can't find me I had a pastor or minister that I listened to she always brings this up about time frame when she had spiritual demons trying to track her in the spirit realm and the Lord opened her spiritual eyes while she was awake to see the demonic presence that was outside of her house that was sniffing for her. Pray a shield of the blood of Jesus to cover you in this season to protect you from anything coming at you that cannot or should not have access to you in this season, okay? Next, because we're here, the Lord showed me this. I have been praying, and this is something you should pray as well. Isaiah 22 and 22. What does the front part of Isaiah 22, 22 say? That God shuts doors that man can not open. You got to pray that these counterfeits cannot open the door to gain access to you. And this is how the Lord showed me, and I hate bringing this up, but because the Lord's bringing this image to my mind again, I'm using this for you as a warning. Remember, I did the word on Breaking Dawn, and I told you I saw somebody literally in the middle of me recording that walk past the window in the building that I was uh, sitting in at the time. And I said, the devil is a liar. Then the next video, I told you the person looked like my ex. 
because we're praying to cover ourselves, the enemy knows he can't get to you. But this is what the enemy does. If the enemy can't get to you with a person, he'll start getting to you in your head. Because what have I told you multiple times before? Eyes, nose, mouth, ears, hands. Mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, social, financial. This is, these are the areas that he attacks. Nine times out of 10, if you notice you're being attacked, you can pick one of those areas and that's the area that you're being attacked in. What it is, is the enemy. And sometimes if you pay closer attention, you can line them up to the mental, to the actual, uh, whether it's something your eyes can see, things that you hear that can trigger your emotions, things that you can smell that can trigger a physical taste or physical effect from you. You can line each one of them up to each other. I've said this before. But with that being said, if the enemy cannot get you through people externally, he'll start messing with your own brain. Meaning you've prayed that you can't be manipulated. You've prayed uh, that the enemy will flee from you. You've prayed all this type of stuff. God got you. The angels have covered that. The enemy has fleed from you. But the enemy knows that if he um, he's fleed from you, but you are the only one that can open the door for the enemy to get new access. You understand what I'm saying? So because of that, what he'll do is you are not being touched whatsoever. When I saw the person that looked like my ex, that might not have even been my ex. It could have, didn't I just say that there are people that look identical to people? How the enemy finds people that look identical to people, I do not know. <laughs> but he manages to drop them directly in front of you. He'll make you feel like, oh my God, is, was that really? <laughs> and you'll be like, what? You'll double take and you're like, maybe it wasn't, but God, that looked just like him. <laughs> but where was the man? On the opposite side of the glass. The enemy can't get to you, but he will throw something in front of you to get your fear to jump up in your spirit. You're in a spiritual fishbowl. You're in a spiritual space of isolation. You got glass around you. You can see outside, but guess what? It can't see you. It may come up close to the glass, but it can't see you. Just like with the prophetess, when she was in her house that night, she was sitting in her office praying on the floor and when she turned to look outside and the Lord opened her spiritual eyes to see the demon that was outside the demon was sniffing all around her house couldn't find it the enemy can't get to you but because you know this attack is a potential what will happen is you'll feel like he can but he's on the opposite side of the glass the enemy will come right up to the glass he can't get through the glass because you got a supernatural hedge of protection around you. You've got a supernatural thiophan around you, which is a hedge of protection set on anointed fire that the enemy cannot get through. You see the enemy on the opposite side of the wall. And just because you see him don't mean he can get to you. And the Lord put that movie in front of me last night and I'm sitting up there thinking, I don't think he wanted me to say that this is particularly an attack. This is more so, this is your own false evidence appearing real. Eye gates, ear gates, what you're hearing other people say. Yesterday, I was sitting and listening to a word um, from Trust, Trust, obedience and imagine ministries and she was talking about a situation where for two days she entertained a counterfeit i heard somebody else literally say they wanted to entertain a counterfeit for two days i've heard people say they wanted to date people while they're waiting for their god and spouse but then i also heard somebody else say if god already done picture spouse 
and you already know who your spouse is, why in the world would you sit there and go in the club and entertain other people when you know who your spouse is? For what? That's a level of pride. I'm sorry to say it. That's exactly what it is. I'm sorry. Did I hurt your little feelings when I said that? Yes, it's a level of pride because you want attention. You're operating in a spirit that desires attention and the enemy is literally sitting there. You want attention? Okay, babe, come here. I'll give you the attention. What attention you want? Because they know exactly your flavor. <laughs> they know exactly what you want. In the, in the um song I did the review on, you just might type. Temptation looks exactly like your type. So why would you even want to entertain the door being opened? For what? Because that means you're operating in sin. Iniquity is a sin that you like. And some of y'all run around here entertaining the counterfeit because you're like, he ain't here yet, so I might as well just entertain a count of it. For what? For what? Because you can't sit another five minutes and wait for your spouse who is literally around the corner. For what? Let me tell you something. I probably said this before. I'm going to say it again. When one of the ministers I was listening to was about to meet her god ordained spouse. Her friend invited her two days before her spouse showed up two to go on a, a a yacht she's like you don't ever go out come on i know you like the water let's go and she was like i don't want to go out i'm fine i like my bible i'm gonna stay in the house and she was like no come on you you stay in the house way too much how you gonna find you if you don't come out and she took her and got on a boat and she put on a nice dress and she was like the whole time she was sitting there on the edge of the Leaning on the edge of the boat like, God, when can I get off this boat and go home? And here comes this guy. He's in a suit. He looks really nice. And he comes up and he's like, hey. And he starts talking to her. And she's like, oh, uh-huh. Mm -mm. And she's not entertained by him. But the, the friend, I don't know whether the friend gave him her number or what. But they leave. And she's like, she just was trying to get away from the guy. And then he calls her and says, oh, do you want to go out on a yacht? Do you want to go out on this? And she's like, no, 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 no. I don't really want to do all that. And he's like, um, come out with me. We're going to go to lunch or brunch. And then... It's Sunday morning. She's supposed to go to church. The guy invites her to go on his yacht. She says, no, I don't want to go on the yacht. I go to, to church. First sign, red flag, if everything else wasn't, that he was not operating with God. Next, she gets to church. Her ex-husband's there. So that was also supposed to drive her to start wanting to go out with this guy. She says, no. Guy calls her. This is the day her God ordained spouse contacts her. He's talking, yap, 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 yap. I think she's on the phone with him. She gets a Facebook message from her God ordained spouse. Let me repeat that. She gets a Facebook message from her God ordained spouse while this guy is talking her ear off. And she says, I am so sorry. I cannot talk to you anymore. I am so sorry. Can you please? I don't longer want to talk to you. She gets off the phone with him, messages her God ordained spouse. They got hooked up then. And if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, they just celebrated their eighth wedding anniversary. Excuse me. Why in all hell do you want to entertain somebody? Look at what she almost missed out on just by trying to push off somebody she wasn't even interested in. But you want to sit there and entertain somebody? For what? Yeah, you go ahead and entertain that person for the next 48 hours. Remember what I said in the beginning of the message where the God ordained spouse was wanting to intera interact with her. Wanting to say something. Wanting to come forth. And the guy rushed in real quick. 
There are people that desire to come in. And I said this in the temptation word. They want to come in, but they want to only get what they can get from you, strip you, and mess you up real bad. God is showing you the test. You either are going to pass the test or fail the test. And you know what I noticed about most people right now that are being tested in that way? Let me tell you, they all were desiring companionship or temporarily stepped out of position in relation to they got a day in marriage. Mm -hmm. So they decided to step out of the will of God and start let me eyes wander because I, they're like, I don't want to sit here and wait for him. I, what am I sitting here waiting for? Let me tell you something. One of the main things that the enemy is trying to do right now is to get you stuck in a spirit of apathy where you don't care about this promise no more. I don't want it. I don't really want like to I don't care no more. I just, I mean, this is taking too heck on long. It's, I mean, it's been one year. It's been like three years. Oh my God, it's been seven years. You know, there are people out here that waited 10 to 12 years. Somebody, I think I heard somebody say they waited 15. Standing for the same person. And some people are like, oh, I'm not going to wait. Oh, I'm not going to. There was one person I know that waited nine years and all of this. So you gonna get up here right now. You've been waiting and God is beating you over the head and telling you this man is around the corner and you are sitting up there trying to act disgruntled and out, out of that spirit of apathy and pride. You're like, you don't say that before God. You don't say that before God. And this is what's happening. What did I tell you in um, Breaking Dawn? The enemy is trying to bring forth an illusion to your God ordained spouse. You don't even have to have done it, but if he can make it look like you did, he won't approach you. The enemy ain't playing fair. He's doing and throwing every grenade into this situation that he can throw. If you're going to assist him, and my mother used to have this old saying called help the bear. <laughs> I loved her. She used to say, help the bear, which means you're going to go and assist your enemy in taking you out. Go, go right on ahead. Do exactly what he needs you to do in order to take yourself out. But understand that God ordained spouse is going to be looking at you. The Lord showed me in a dream. Oh God. Eight months to a year ago. And in the dream, he showed me the characters from my favorite television show from when I was a kid where the guy was watching the girl. And it looked like she was entertaining another guy, but she had no inter interest in this other guy. But to him, it looked like she was entertaining someone else. The enemy is playing games with these men's heads to get them to not approach you. And especially if your guy is, is um, sweet and kind and doesn't want to put himself upon you like that. The enemy is trying to make him think that somebody else is there. Who did it? A servant of God recently did a word. Uh, it had been anywhere from three, four months ago, which showed on the front cover of it that your God a day spouse is quickly approaching you because he thinks somebody else. And in the, on the cover, it shows the God a day spouse standing at a distance in the foreground while he sees his god a day spouse, the female, talking to another guy. These men think you're entertaining other people. So the enemy wants them to think you're entertaining other people. And he wants for you to be afraid that somebody may come to you. Don't bite the bait. Now there's one more thing I wanted to state here in relation to this. Uh, Lord, what's that last thing? Um, I think it was in relation to the entertaining to other people. You just got to be careful about entertaining people. Because the enemy ain't out here playing around with you. He ain't. He's not. And, um, hold on, Jesus. 
So I believe that was everything I wanted to talk about. If the Lord brings me back, I'll do a little mini short of whatever it is that I forgot. But I think I covered all of the points uh, that I wanted to, uh, to cover, which was entertaining a counterfeit. Oh, that's what it was. The last point I wanted to talk about, be careful of becoming the counterfeit. Some of you, because you desire to entertain a counterfeit, you're becoming a counterfeit for somebody else because you are um, lusting after the ideal of being in relationship with somebody while waiting. There are people out here that are literally entertaining being in relationship are lusting and perversion, operating in perversion and a spirit of pride and iniquity, desiring to be in relationship with people that are not their God ordained spouse, which thereby turns you into the counterfeit to somebody else. And when you're supposed to be the God ordained spouse for the person you're supposed to be with, no, 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 we ain't supposed to be out here doing that. We ain't supposed to be out here moving slick like that as women or men because you don't want to wait for God to release the person who is literally around the corner. Do you realize that that's a test? Do you realize that's a test? A lot of y'all sitting up there trying to entertain and do all of this and God already done told you who your spouse is, but oh, I'm, I'm just going to go out here and date. What, is, what are we doing? <laughs> I thought the whole point of us getting in, in these kingdom marriages was so that we didn't have to go out here and date. But pride in you says, oh, he out there, let me. So you won't go become a counterfeit for somebody else and stall somebody else's journey. What does that look like for you? Oh, okay. Oh, oh, let me. Did that help you? Did you see yourself? Did you gain understanding? Oh, okay. So that's what the Lord wanted me to bring that last little bit of attention to. I hope that blessed you and you came to understand. Sit with yourself. Admit to God. Repent. If you've been trying to do that. If the God, if God already couldn't show you who your God ordained spouse is. Because guess what? Your God ordained spouse has permissive will too. If he chooses to say to the Lord, uh, I don't want her because she, she moving around slick like that. Hmm. Then they can sit and go through their healing process and get a new love story too. You think you're the only one that gets the opportunity to ask for that? Oh, okay. Doesn't look good when the shoe's on the other foot. Does it? Oh, okay. So I hope this blessed you. Until next time, much love, faith, peace, and blessings to you. Bye-bye.